Yes. And then the third thing is the first time I've actually met a black farmer who's based in the UK. Well, that is definitely um, a first because yeah. um, I must say I haven't met any at all. Yeah. So um, we seem to be um, very low in numbers yeah. here in the UK. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So how, how did that come about? If you don't mind just sharing your story briefly with us. Um, well, j just to go back, mm -hmm. really, um, I was born in Jamaica okay, and amazing. I was born in a place called um, Frank Fleal Clarendon, which is country. So if, yes. you, if you went there today, yeah. it's farm country. They, yeah. they, they still grow stuff there. And um, my parents came over to this country in mm. the um, 1950s. Yeah. And so you in Windrush? Windrush. I'm, yeah. I'm of the Windrush generation. Oh, in fact, I'm, I am one of those people who would have been sent back home yeah. if I hadn't renewed my passport. Um, and the reason why, because I came over on a one of the blue um, British and Commonwealth passports. Oh, okay. And I, I remember I had to become nationalised as a British person mm. to get a British passport, which I did many, many years ago. Yeah. And the reason why I did that is because I used to travel a lot. So I understand very much that... Um, the people who came over at that time as children who probably didn't do much traveling mm -hmm. suddenly got to an age and discovered, oh, the law had changed yeah, and yeah. passed them by. Mm -hmm. And they suddenly found that, you know, after spending so many years in this country, they didn't um, belong here. So I'm of that generation. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, as you know, people like my parents came to this country in the 50s yeah. um, and they in my parents case they went to live in Birmingham mm -hmm. and the important thing I like to tell people is this what we should remember as black people mm -hmm. is that um, to be here in this country in the first place is a demonstration that our parents were entrepreneurial. Yes. It's a very entrepreneurial thing. They're risk takers, weren't they? Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, it's very, very entrepreneurial to leave your country of origin, leave everything that you know, all your friends, all your anchors of survival, to leave that behind, to go to a foreign country to advance your life, and not just your life, but the life of your children. Yeah. And I think it's really important that we re remind the second and the third generation who were born in this country that they are different because their parents were entrepreneurs. Yeah. And entrepreneurs are people who are prepared to break the mode and do something differently. Most definitely. You know, in, 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 in the 50s, like all people, all foreigners, all migrants, when they come to a new country, you know, get treated like shit, basically. Yeah. Whether that's Irish, Polish, um, Caribbean, you know, we had our, 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 our challenges during the 50s and 60s. And um, I was brought up in a place called Small Heath in Birmingham. Oh, yes, heard of it, yeah. Yeah, and it's one of those classic poor <laughs> inner city areas, yeah. you know. Before we came there, it was the Irish, then us, and then it was the Bangladeshis. So it's just one of those cheap housing um, areas and it's one of those areas that is sort of devoid of hope opportunity mm -hmm. and um, in my case um, my there's 11 of us in my family oh wow and all living together all living together in a terrace house so there's oh, wow. you know it's very very small yeah. I was brought up three to a bed where um, not only three to a bed but I know what it was like to be head to toe head to toe <laughs> yeah it was you know it was tough and um, I knew what it was like to go hungry. Mm. My my mother had to try and feed 11 people on one chicken. Wow. And so, you know, I even to this day, I have a, a bone fetish because you had to chew this <laughs> bone. All the juice out of the membrane, isn't it? You choose every bit of nutrition from this yeah. bone because, um, you know, we were always quite hungry. Now, mm. <clears throat> as a way of supplementing the family income, my father had an allotment. Amazing. And it was my job as the oldest boy to look after this allotment. Mm -hmm. And this allotment really became my oasis away from the misery of living in a place like Small Heath. And uh, I loved it so much that I can remember making a promise to myself at the age of 11 that one day I would like to own my own farm. Wow. And, so uh, even at that young tender age, you decided that you wanted to be a farmer? At the age of yeah. 11, yes. Yeah. And I didn't know how I was going to do it. Mm. But it was a promise that I had uh, made to myself. 
And then everything that I subsequently did with my life mm -hmm. was to try and get into a position to, to buy, buy this farm. Yeah. And it took me some 35 years or so, 30, yeah, 35 years mm -hmm. to, to get into a position to buy this farm. But one of the things I like to say to young people is, look, you know, mm -hmm. dream early because yeah. it takes a long time to actually achieve your yeah, dreams. To manifest, yeah, yeah. Yes, definitely.